Donald Trump's looming legal troubles are not helping President Biden ahead of a potential Biden-Trump rematch next fall. The two are now tied at 43 percent in the latest New York Times-Siena College poll, and Biden's approval rating is a mere 39 percent. Now, that's an improvement from last summer, but still concerning to Democrats uh, in the White House, because just 20 percent of Democrats say that they would be enthusiastic having Biden as the party's nominee. 51 percent say they would be satisfied, but not enthusiastic. Joining me now is NBC chief White House correspondent and Weekend Today co-anchor Peter Alexander and Peter Baker, chief White House correspondent for The New York Times. So to the two of you, uh, Peter Alexander, first to you. Your sources in the White House, how concerned are they about this polling? Well, I think they're concerned about the lack of enthusiasm. Probably they would like to see a big ovation whenever the president, you know, walks up on a stage. And they do have that in smaller venues. I think the White House recognizes that over the course of this next year, one of their biggest priorities, biggest responsibilities is going to be to demonstrate the implementation of those policies that the president was able to get passed. Some with only the Democrats, some done bipartisan. They talk about infrastructure week, which under the former president was sort of a punchline. They say now we're in for infrastructure infrastructure decade with a trillion dollars to be spent around the country. But they do want to demonstrate to voters around the country that that is happening in their backyard. And they realize that's a major challenge. But at the end of the day, they say this is binary. This is about someone versus someone else. And if Joe Biden is facing Donald Trump, the White House, I would say certainly those who support the president, his allies say that at the end of the day, Americans, those who may be in the middle right now, will recognize that there's there's no choice for them but to pick Joe Biden. Well, Peter Baker, the Biden campaign is also facing new developments in the investigation into his son, Hunter Biden's former business partner, Devin Archer, reportedly testifying to Congress behind closed doors that Hunter was trying to sell the access by selling the illusion of access to his father. Um, although that Archer reportedly admitted that the president was never directly when he was vice president and then after office, never involved in Hunter's business dealings. But Republicans are leaning into what he did say. Democrats, even who support the president, say that all along that, that he was at least present for 20 phone calls over a decade, where he yeah, was either on the phone, in the room, saying hello to business associates. They say it was small talk. Is that using the influence, using the Biden name as a branding? Well, look, obviously it's not uh, something the White House would have liked to have seen. They, ha they have to defend the president's statement that he has had no conversations with his son about his business practices, and now they're going to have to try to square that comment, that as assurance with the notion that he got on the phone with business partners. As you say, the report we get from the testimony is that he wasn't actually talking business, so therefore they could probably make the argument that uh, you know, getting on the phone and having chit chat with business associates of his son is not the same thing as being involved in his business or even talking to his son about, about his business. But it's a, it's a way of, of uh, uh, questioning his veracity about this and questioning his handling of his family. And Republicans are eager on the eve of what seems to be yet another Trump indictment to make Hunter Biden as much of the focus as possible and Joe Biden as much uh, focus as possible. Make it out as if, well, you know, maybe there's something is wrong with our candidate, but their candidate is bad too. It, it is a, a, an exercise in what aboutism. Mind you, President Trump, uh, while in office, of course, uh, never did relinquish his own business, uh, much less his children's business. So it's 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 kind of an odd situation for Republicans to focus on, given that they didn't really seem to care too much about Trump's conflicts when he was in office. Perhaps more importantly to the Democratic base, which seems to be less enthusiastic, especially, you know, really important parts of the base, is the age issue. Uh, to Peter Baker, you know, <laughs> there's no way to change that. How do they combat that? Yeah, I mean, that's the one thing you can't do anything about. You might be able to make inflation get better. You might be able to get more fundraising. You might be able to do more, uh, you know, campaign stops. You cannot make him younger. And, of course, you know, as much as they would like to sell him, as a vigorous 80-year-old with aviator glasses and, and a cool grandpa vibe uh, taking bike rides on the beach, there is just sort of this locked-in-place image of a president who was slower than he was, who was a little confused at times and mangles names or memories. And that's a hard thing to combat. Now, they're going to make the argument, as Peter Alexander said, that, yeah, fine, okay, we'll take our guy over the other guy any day of the week. The other guy is only three or four years younger. He has his own issues with age. If you look at his you know, sentence pattern, you can't really diagram a noun, a verb, and an object the way you can uh, at a younger age. 
So, you know, they're going to try to take on that argument at some point. But it is a real liability for President Biden, and it's the one thing you can't do too much about.